really hung up on the parameters for some reason mm -hmm. and I noticed that it's in my head it's actually there are two types of workflow one is just a workflow of workflows there's yes. it doesn't take any events it's just okay I have something I need to do well that's the starting point and then it uh, kind of multiplies into different workflows right. um, and then there's the other kind which is the one that you actually take user input and right. and um, move around in the state machine itself um, so I understand why a unified API is desired because a lot of the logic is the same but it took me a long time to mm -hmm. understand what the parameters are doing because sometimes they say you can just give it nothing like the Kotlin nothing class right. but why do you yeah do it? oh how does you how do you move a state machine without any events like how do you transition from one circle to another and then i realized that because that's a top level right. workflow of workflows it that's why it can take nothing right. so um like I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit but i uh no, it's I good. just want to mention it before i forget and that, and you're not the only person who's <laughs> had that kind of you know uh, cliff to jump over that's a bad analogy um <laughs> light bulb moment yes <laughs> um, what like one thing that's confusing here is the term event pretty much means user input event, uh, button click or whatever else. But the state machines have lots of other signals coming into them. Um, so oh, do they now? So there's a workflow. That's, that's exactly what I thought events are. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. Um, the uh, um, if I'm one of those composite workflows that you were talking about, um, even if it's not waiting for specific button clicks and stuff for itself, it is. Um, monitoring a, a sub workflow, and that sub workflow is going to effectively tell it, "Hey, I've changed. I've, uh, I've, you know, I'm done now." Uh, but change. it does not uh, do that through the events class. Exactly. That's why you give it nothing as events. Right. Yep. So how does it like Let's notify the, Let's find the mother workflow? I don't mm -hmm. know. How Excellent it, segue. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the shell reactor uh, it looks like this. Um, and reactor is the workflow generator. Yes. Exactly. Correct. So it does. It has two jobs. Um, a, re, uh, a reactor uh, launches, you know, instantiates the whatever workflow it defines and starts it running. Um, and then it also defines this on react method, which is where it's doing. It's just actually being a state machine. So. So um, on react is more like in my help you're on transition from one state to another. Is yep. that yep. a good okay? Because yep. I have a, the word React, all I can think of is the React JS library, which I know nothing about. And um, just, which is one of the reasons we're getting away from the word React. Yes. <laughs> there's also there's also an Rx Java like library called Reactor actually. Oh, so, is that so? Yeah, okay. it's, it's, a, it's a popular term. Yeah, I guess it's like stuff. Like it doesn't yeah. mean anything to me. So Man. so but right now on React is because I always imagine the, the the state diagram to have like little circles and arrows around that, and all React is. Mm -hmm. When you have received input such that you may change state, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay. So what happens in this thing? This is this is our top level uh, composite React composite state machine, um, and the return type of it is kind of interesting. And well, another thing probably subject to change pretty soon mm -hmm. is uh, it's emitting. It's not emitting the new state. It's emitting a single. Of what the state will be, it's a, it's emitting like a future or a deferred. So pretty much whenever on React gets called, uh, we we return an object that will eventually say, "Oh, now I've entered this state." Um, so the thing, it, it returns the object that is waiting for the event to come, which will then tell you what the new state is when that event got there. Ch -ch Try again. <laughs> so this, it's it's not so much that this gets called. Um, sorry, it's not so much that this gets called. Um, when the next event happens, it's more that this gets called when we enter the next state, so that we, we can return the object that will tell you the state after that, when sooner or later a user input event. Oh, gotcha. So it's basically writing the rule of the state machine, exactly. but we're not executing that, is, that rule yet. That is exactly the right way to put it, and that's the direction we're moving in even harder with uh, the stuff that we weren't quite ready to roll out today. Yeah. Oh, it'd be, it'd be great okay. if we, I can write the rules in a in in, in a file somewhere else and then it generates Kotlin and Swift for me. That's a good idea. Um, it, it, <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't have to do that, but that's that's effectively what's happening at runtime. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm more thinking of like in the dagger style, where you right. annotate things. So, you know, the thing that you write, I don't even, even care what it is. As long as it generates, it generates things that I don't ever have to read unless I'm doing an annual dialogue pair programming session. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but you bring up an interesting point, um, which is that uh, we're going to have um, kind of sibling libraries for Kotlin and Swift. 
um, that are going to look very similar. So, um, and the logic hopefully will be the same if you yeah. implement the same we, app on yeah, both platforms. We've been working really hard with our, our iOS peers to make sure that we're using the, the, the same overall semantics and runtime model, the same terms for everything, the same names right. for everything, and uh, it's, it's, it's been a good experience. Yeah, I, I'm just so happy that uh, I finally understood what is this whole single business. Yeah. <laughs> so. Does that go away? Ice. Ah, yes. Yeah. Well, the concept uh, that yes, we are. The concept is still there. We yeah. are specifying what should happen. Exactly. When yeah. the event. And that, and that concept yeah. it, like, gets even more so. So it's like every, every time you right. are told to update what you're returning is, well, the next time you tell me to update, here's the thing to run to tell you how to, tell you how to do that. This is, this is all a builder. This is a state machine builder. We're trying to be very declarative, so right. you're yeah. not like actually running, you know, the state machine yourself. You're just saying, here's the state transitions to do. And yeah, here's the here's running for me. Um, so the way the code here looks in this case, um, uh, this is a pretty typical shape. Um, we have a single single expression in this uh, React function. It's a when statement built around um, the possible states of the login of the sorry of the shell. Um, so let's look at what those states are. In a composite reactor like this, um, it's got basically two states. Um, it is either authenticating, we're running the login workflow, or once we've actually logged in, we're going to run the running a game workflow, which is the thing that actually oh. drives a tic-tac-toe game. So the state machine for the top level is actually have each state corresponding to a screen. Uh, each state corresponding to a, a, a set of screens. Oh, so, oh yeah, set of screen, but right. yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking about activities in my in my multi-activity <laughs> world. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, right, and then um, what's nice about having this consistent model is this outer composite state machine. It has no idea how nested this these other ones are. So right. like the authenticating um, workflow, it just shows individual screens, like you were talking about. Each one of its states really is a screen, yeah. a screen, a screen. Um, running game is actually another composite workflow, um, right. which. Um, takes care of things like um, prompting for names, I'm actually running the game, the game is over now, let's show the results. And it has a, a another lower level workflow that's actually in charge of doing the tic-tac-toe game itself. Yeah, uh, yeah. this is really cool because I can imagine if Square has multiple apps and both of them needs logging in, yes. you can reuse that <laughs> sub-workflow. Exactly. And it's funny you say that because we <laughs> Zach in particular has put a lot of effort into taking our horrible old um, authentication code and turning it into one of these things, and then we have another friend who's been moving that between various right. apps. And, and it is literally the first thing I need to deal with. I'm a freelancer, right? So I go around and build app for everyone. First thing is authentication. Mm -hmm. Again. <laughs> uh, how many times do I need to deal with the fact that like you know your password is too short? Right now. Yeah. Right. So it's nice that we have a reusable component, which I struggle to make one that I can plug in because I don't have something like right. that to, to deal with the fact that sometimes you need to authenticate a few screens into the app, right? Because you don't want to block people and then they run away from your app. Yeah. You know, but you also want to give them a, an option to log in right away so that they can see all their favorites. So it's, um, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> so um, we can, we're almost done with this deep dive, I think. Um, yeah. Especially, we're not going to get too hung up on the specific syntax because um, it's subject to change. It's subject to, it's to change, and uh, the confusing parts are boilerplate that, in particular, is going to go away. Yeah. But the only other thing I do want to point out, because this is another aha moment when I was reading the code, is the fact that the state in the state machine um, is a sealed class, which is for me a powerful enum. Yeah. It, that was a little bit difficult for me to understand because I thought a state is a single thing. But it's actually, at least in this definition, the state is actually an enum of multiple different states, which, I mean, naming things are hard. Because uh, when I look at the interface, it's like, how does it only take a single state to build a state machine? Don't you need to define all the possible states? And but actually, the state it is the universe of all the states you could be in. Exactly. So I just want to mention that. Um, right, so by using, by using the sealed class for this, um, uh, Kotlin, the Kotlin compiler knows that if I'm saying I have a state, then by God, it's either authenticating or running game because there are no other possible things it could be. Right. So when and you write a you when can... statement, you don't have the else like exactly. yeah. blow up the app. <laughs> and if you add a new state and you forget to add that when statement, you can't even compile it, let alone crash at runtime. We love Kotlin. It's <laughs> Valentine's Day, by the way. <laughs> yeah, nice. We are recording it on the Valentine's <laughs> Day, so we should write Kotlin a love letter. It's like. 
it's such an easy way to make mistakes when you have different yeah. cases and then you forget. So this is a, this is a good use of a sealed glass for a steak machine. It's, yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. So in our our top level thing, like we said, we're either um, you know, we get told to react, we do the when state, which causes sealed glass. We know that we're going to be exhausted, exhausted, <laughs> <laughs> we're exhausted too. And we're either authenticating or running the game. So if we're in the authenticating state, then we tell our um, state machine builder. DSL, um, hey, thing that makes work runs workflows for me. I'd like you to run uh, the authorization workflow for me, and when the, when it tells me that it's finished, and I'd like you to enter a new state, which is running game. If I'm in the running game state, then I actually am going to listen for some events. Um, if I receive a logout event, I'm going to log out because I'm not logged in anymore. And otherwise, I would like there to be a workflow running, um, and this workflow is a run game workflow. Um, which we'll, we'll take a look at. And when we finish running the game, then I'd like to, well, start again. I'm going to re-enter the run game state and I'll offer to run another game. And enter state is a workflow function or is it something that I have to implement myself when I have a specific workflow? That is workflow and interface always it has implementation in it. I guess that's the question. Yeah, so workflow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we'll do about Okay. Uh, yeah, workflow is an interface. So enter state um, is actually another seal class. Um, so um, as so when you so you can do it's a state machine, it does state transitions, um, but it can also finish. So um, it can say like I have nothing else to do, um, here's my result. So but you can we look at the code file. Yes. So it's, yeah, it's got two, so... Um, so onReact is the method, and onReact returns a single of reaction, which is like basically um, something happened, I'd like you to react to it, and there are two reactions you can have. I'm going to move into a new state, or oh. I'm, I have the workflow I'm done now, and here's my result value. Ah, interesting. So to answer my own question, it is a part of the workflow library. I don't yes. have to yes, define the end state function, right. and is is how you manage the state machine by well, okay, go to that state, or exactly. I'm, I'm at the end state, uh, or I, I kind of look at reaction as a side effect almost. When I enter yeah. this state, I'm gonna do something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Good. That's exactly. So remember, we said that we were the on react method's job is to um, build the thing that will actually run the state machine. This is all part of building it. And then the last step of building it is um, what to happen next. And at each of those times, we're either moving along to the next state or we're done. Right.